In this presentation, we're going to look at the test for equality of variances. So in some hypothesis tests, it's often assumed that two tests under examination have equal variance. Now we would test this assumption using a test called the f-test. Now to implement that in R, we use the command var.test. What we do is specify the name of the two data sets on, under examination. So let's be clear about what the null and alternative hypotheses are. The null hypothesis is that the two data sets have equal variance. Sigma 1 equals sigma 2 squared. And the alternative is that they do not have equal variance. So sigma 1 squared is not equal to sigma 2 squared. Now, importantly, the way this test is constructed, it does things in terms of a variance ratio. So if two values are equal, then the ratio of those two val values is 1. So if two variances are equal, the ratio of those variances is 1. Now, just to be clear about how we would make a decision based on this procedure, if the p-value is smaller than a pre-specified level of significance, which was usually 5%, or 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. So if we get a small number, we reject the null hypothesis. Conversely, if we get a p-value that is not smaller than this pre-specified level of significance, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what we're going to do now is set up R and have a look at two examples. So first off, I have two data sets, x1 and y1. Now we're going to look at the variance of x1 and y1. So the variance of x1 is 13.8 and the variance of y1 is 26.45 so the ratio of these two numbers is going to be quite large variance of x1 divided by x2 so it's actually f or small in the case uh, that we have it here so this is this value is quite diff uh, quite far away from 1 uh, x1 is only 50% of the variance of y1 what we're going to do is perform a, a formal hypothesis test. So x1 and y1. By the way, it doesn't really matter which order we get. If I was to put in y1 first, it wouldn't make any difference. So let's hit return there. I'm going to scroll down. Now, here we have the ratio again the ratio of variances. We have a 95% confidence interval for this ratio. And also up here we have the p-value. Now you notice actually we have a high p-value. It is not less than 5%. So in this case we fail to reject the null hypothesis and we, w we will continue with the assumption that these will, uh, data sets are, uh, have equal variance. Just to be clear actually, the alternative hypothesis, I'm just looking at this line here, the true ratio of variances is not equal to 1. We fail to reject that hypothesis. So anyway, let's move on to a second example and I have another example here, I'm just going to scroll back. So we have x2 and y2, so variance of x2 is again 13.95 and variance of y2 is again uh, is uh, they're very similar numbers to what we had the last time around now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to perform the procedure again x var variance test varta test x2 and y2 now we get a very similar ratio of for the variances but we you notice we get a very high a low p value this time so in this case we get a p value lower than 5% so this, in this case, we reject the null hypothesis. So uh, we get a very different outcome here. Now, the question arises, actually, why do we get two different outcomes? Well, it all comes down to the sample size in this case. So x1 has 15 elements, and y1 has 15 elements as well. Oops. Uh, whereas x2 and y2 both have 65 elements. So we have a much larger sample size the second time round. So we'd be much uh, more, uh, we've much stronger evidence about uh, our our sample. And that concludes the presentation.